What's up everyone, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming and it got me thinking last night with all the the possible future announcements and I was looking over some of the games I already had in both current and previous generations and it, it just made me wonder, I mean they release some of the, the HD collections and HD ports and remasters that they bring over seem to be games that I don't know, maybe just don't seem like they'd be that popular. I mean, I've heard of some of them, and I wonder, it's like, who who wants this at all? That that kind of that kind of uh, market, if if you will. But it made me think that with some of the other things, I mean, with some of the the great games over the the last couple of well, I said the last couple of years, but let's go with the the last couple of generations of gaming. It just it makes me wonder why they choose the games they do now I know sometimes it's just for ease of port sometimes it's because of the series it's in sometimes it's you know there's there's all sorts of 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 crazy reasons why they do this kind of stuff but it just got me to thinking that out of all the games I can think of or that I own or that I enjoyed yeah I made a little list of what I would like to see if they were to do, you know, HD remasters and all. Now, I'm not fully advocating the HD remasters because I, I know we live in basically the HD remaster era and that's basically a lot of bullshit as it is because they're just porting old games instead of making new ones. But, okay, yes, some, some of the ports are good, some of the ports are shite, some of the ports are of good games, some of the ports are of crap games or games that I can't imagine anyone would want to think of. Now, who knows, some of the games on my list might be those to you. So, obviously, it's it's all opinions and I means some of these games that I'm about to list off here are that I, I grew up playing and, you know, they, they hold very special memories and, you know, good times to me. So, they might not to you, you might hear this list and think, Jesus, I mean, who, who the fuck... Who who would want a HD remaster of that? Or you know, so it, it's obviously subjective, and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm I just want to put my opinion out there that if they were to do HD remasters, some of these are the games that I would like. Now, before I get onto the list, I will just say I'm I'm skipping all the the standard stuff. I mean, okay, yes, we'd all like uh, HD remakes, proper remakes, not just upscales or ports. Of things like say Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, Legend of Dragoon, Final Fantasy VII, all you know, there that's played out. So I'm not I'm not going to bother including including things like that. I'm mostly reaching from the sixth gen, which is the PS2, the original Xbox, the GameCube, and the Dreamcast. And of course, some of the games that I aren't on this list are already in HD format. If you know HD remaster format, I mean you've got the Legend of Zelda. Wind Waker, you've got MGS 2 and 3, Final Fantasy X Collection, Tales of Symphonia Collection, so all that stuff is there. There, there. There's also one or two Wii games on here as well, because I do feel that those these specific ones would benefit from a proper HD remaster. So, without further ado, we'll get straight into the list. And this one is probably one that everyone is going to expect, but straight away I'll get it out of the way at the top. Shemu 1 and 2. Or, you know, some of the greatest games ever made. S specifically Shemu 1 because that changed the landscape for practically all the games, well all the you know, open world well not open world adventure but uh, all the the role playing games since then. So that's that's obviously a a big thing. I'd like to see it Shemu 1 and 2 as a HD collection with both both games that that are allegedly already done actually in Sega. There's rumors being flown around for the last few years that they're actually complete, the HD ports, and they're just waiting for a, a better release or better time to release them. So, personally, I'd like to see it on either PS4 or Xbox One. I have no preference as long as they both run and play the same. It's an oldish game, so I'd assume that both would would do the, the port justice and give the proper performance. Or you could argue PC as well, but um, I would take no preference as long as I get the the same experience across all the formats. Next one, 
this is this will be a collection as well. This is Time Splitters 1, 2, and 3, otherwise known as Time Splitters 1, Time Splitters 2, and Time Splitters Future Perfect. Now, I never I never really enjoyed Future Perfect, which is the third game, but I can't even begin to fathom how many hours I've put into Time Splitters 1 and 2. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. The the story and the characters and the levels, the, the enemies, they were all, the guns, they were all great. The, the multiplayer was brilliant, even just against bots or with friends against bots or against friends. It was just fantastic. And then they had in level editors and all that. It was it was brilliant. I had unbelievable and r innumerable amounts of fun on Time Splitters 1 and 2. Like I said, I didn't really enjoy Time Splitters 3, aka Future Perfect, that much. But for completion's sake and for the people who did enjoy it, I prefer to see it released as a collection rather than just one or two or one or two as a collection rather than, you know, just leave the people who enjoy Future Perfect out. So, next up we have, um, these are a, an RPG series on from the PS2. They're called Shadow Hearts. So we have Shadow Hearts 1, Shadow Hearts 2, Covenant, and Shadow Hearts 3, I believe it's called, I didn't even check, I have the box upstairs. Uh, Shadow Hearts 3, the, the New World, I think it's called. But these are fantastic. Well, the first two are fantastic games. I couldn't really enjoy the third one. It, um, it, it was at a really bad. Well, I won't say bad time in my life, but it was at a real inopportune time in my life to, to play it. But Shadow Hearts 1 and 2, I mean, I remember back in the day seeing 1 and, you know, you'd see it on demo discs and in magazines. And then one day it finally came out because back then the internet wasn't what it is now. So you had to rely on magazines for this kind of stuff, and it looked brilliant. And I remember playing it, and it was like, this is this is just as good as it even looked. And then Shadow Hearts Two came out, and that was arguably even better. It's just they were they're all really really good. Well, the, the first two at least are anyway are really really good role playing games, as you'd expect from the top quality role playing games we got of the PS. Uh, well, I was going to say the PS2 gen era, but uh, yeah, the sixth generation consoles. They're absolutely fantastic. I really re like every game on this list. It, I really recommend trying these out, not just for HD port reasons, of course, but just to, to try them out. If you're into the, that type of game, they're generally what I would consider really high-end, high-quality games to make this list. So that's Shadow Hearts. I'd like to see that as, as a trilogy. And even though I just preferred the first two, you know, I, I, I'd rather see the whole thing come out as a trilogy if that was the case. So... Next up, Grandia 2 and Grandia 3. Now, Grandia 2, as many people would probably know, is a fantastic game. The Grandia series in general is just a fantastic series. But Grandia 2 in particular, because Grandia 1 was a PS1 game. Grandia 2 came out on PC, PS2, and Dreamcast. And, it, <coughs> excuse me, it was just absolutely fantastic. It was it's a brilliant game great characters great world and great art style as well so it was overall it was just it was a great game i have grandia 3 on this list as well now i've never personally played grandia 3 but i do own it uh, i only bought it a few months ago and um, it never came out over here in europe so at least not that i'm aware of so grandia 3 was the, the copy i have is a u.s copy so because of that I would like to see that in the HD collection because it's in the Grandia series, which both previous games have been good games. And at the same time, it's a PS2 gen era RPG, so chances are it's probably really good because most of them are. I'm going to get around to running it on my, my PC emulator at some point, so I, I do hope to play it and, and, and enjoy it. So, we move on. Next up is a, a game called Time Stalkers. I'm not sure how many people will be familiar with this. This is a Dreamcast RPG. It's, it's a really good one. You run, it's, a, it's essentially an RPG dungeon crawler. You have your little team. You can get monsters to fight with you. And you fight through randomly generated dungeons to get to, well, the boss. And... It has a really good story because the premise behind it, I won't give away too much, is that you're basically whisked away to somewhere that you don't you know, you don't know, and then you're trying to figure everything out, and then different places start appearing from different eras and different generations, and it, it's really good. And because of that, I'd like to see it on there, because again, it's one of those games 
that I did spend countless hours on and that I can actually remember extremely enjoying. So after that, the, now there's actually two games in this, so we'll we'll count one and two. It would be a Baton Kytos cole, um, collection, HD collection. Uh, I never actually played the second one myself, but Baton Kytos, the, the first one, I actually had to import from the US. On the, they're both on the GameCube. Or at least the first one is, and I think I think both of them are. But it's a really, really colorful game. It, it, first off, the gameplay is good and the combat is good. The the story is good, but the art style and specifically the, the color palette would really, really benefit from a HD remaster. Uh, obviously, you know it it kills me uh, and it kind of kills me to endorse HD remasters but this is one game that would really really benefit from it because it would it would scale really well so we'll move on from that anyway and the next one is a GameCube exclusive it is Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes so for those of you who probably know already it, it it's essentially it's a remake of Metal Gear Solid 1 on the GameCube with full 3D graphics and full 3D world and full 3D controls, first person, all that, in the style of MGS2. So basically, it's MGS1 with some changes, ported into the MGS2 engine, and then put onto the GameCube. Now, there's obviously there's a couple of differences and changes in there, but a lot of people are really happy with it, myself included. I think it is a really good game, and it would be nice to see, because, I mean, the, the HD ports of Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 that released a few years ago are, are great. Not only are they great ports, but they're great games. And even though it's a Nintendo exclusive and there may be issues with you know license and all, it would be a nice thing to see uh, come to a HD port at some point. Mainly because I enjoyed it, and I'm sure a lot of other Metal Gear Solid fans did, but there are people, both Metal Gear Solid fans and non-Metal Gear Solid fans, who haven't played this and would benefit from playing it because they can play it on you know the system of choice rather than a, a, a GameCube at the time. So next one will be fairly quick because this one is tipped to be in development as a HD remaster as it is. It's Resident Evil Zero. Now, so Resident Evil Zero it would work in the same sense as Resident Evil HD remake on the GameCube. Uh, well, from the GameCube to the PC and all the other consoles that came out recently, it's all got the, the photo photorealistic generated backgrounds so it would work in the, the same style and, and vein as that it's a prequel to what happens before Resident Evil 1 so next one I think this is a big one this is this would be Skies of Arcadia Legends or just Skies of Arcadia uh, the Dreamcast version Skies of Arcadia and the GameCube version Skies of Arcadia Legends which released a, li a bit later on with uh, a little bit of additional content so it came with a bit more in there but this is this is an amazing role-playing game it basically blends in standard role-playing combat and adventure with a larger scale flying airship battle style system as well so it really works and it's just again it's also one of those games that has a great color palette and art style that would I personally think would really pop out in a, a HD environment if it got the upscale so I'll throw this one in as well um, I'm not over the top with this one like everyone else is, but it would be nice to see a HD remaster of it. I only played it for the first time maybe, I think it was two or three years ago, but it was actually Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, wow, I played Final Fantasy XIV, that's why I said it. Final Fantasy XII on the PS2. So, not much needs to be said about that. I mean, we all know Final Fantasy XII, it's got... It, it's big world, it's got it's Final Fantasy art, it's got it's Final Fantasy everything and it would be nice to see the HD port on it, especially because we've already seen what HD ports of Final Fantasy PS2 gen games can do with Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2 HD so you'd see something very similar out of this anyway as well we're, get, we're about 80% through the list anyway so don't, don't worry, I know this video is probably dragging on for a bit longer uh, next up is, no, I almost skipped again, Ring of Red. Now, Ring of Red is a game on the PS2. It's essentially a cross between a Fire Emblem slash Front Mission style game, as, as in the, the isometric grid-based tactical system, with some smaller in-game Valkyria Chronicles style gameplay. Uh, so it's a mixture between... 
you know strategic tactical turn based and a little bit of of live action in it as well it it's basically set in a, a it's got a world war 2 aesthetic because of the the way everything is done and the, the names of everything and the, the style of everything as well so i do think that's a really good game and i am um, I don't know if it would benefit massive. Okay, obviously every game would benefit from a better resolution, better graphics, and better hardware. But that's just personally for me one I'd like to, to throw in there as well. So that's it for the. Well, that's it for all of the, the six gen stuff, except for one, which I will get to in a minute. And there's a reason for that. So we move on to the last few games. These are all Wii games. So Pandora's Tower. Pandora's Tower is a, is a decent, de decent good plus ish um rpg uh, that released on the wii I, I do think with the the gameplay and all is generally fine i think it would benefit from better graphics and better performance because it did release on the wii so it was a 480p game fairly low resolution at the time because you know it, it was the wii so e even with that i think if they kept everything the same they just improved the graphics uh, resolution and frame rate uh, well, not just frame rate, but in, ten, in overall the performance, I I think it would be would be in everyone's benefit, especially because that's one of the, the there was a small series of games released. You know, it was they were released here and as well as in the US, but in the US they instantly became hard to find. Uh, Pandora's Tower was one of these. Xenoblade Chronicles was another, and there's another one on this list that I'll list off next. But in America they instantly became really really rare and really really expensive game stops were selling them for over a hundred dollars a copy pre-owned so it, it was it was ridiculous from from what i understand anyway so next up uh, it this is another game that's in in that same series that i just i just listed this game actually it's a, it's a really good game but the graphics broke it for me usually i'm, I'm not a complete graphics horror but this these graphics were just so absolutely bad even for the time and the console they were on they were just ridiculously bad it looked like a high-end ps1 game so this game is the last story it's again it's it's another big rpg on the wii it runs in the same vein of those rare games and that little rare series that i was just talking about but i think if they were to do a hd port of that it would extremely benefit the game uh, Xenoblade Chronicles is it, it says it all. It's on the. It's on, I have it on this list. It's also a Wii game. You know, I mean, it, they've essentially they've made the 3DS port. Uh, if they were to make say a Wii U port or a uh, Nintendo NX port, that would also be a big benefit because it is a great game. And we have Xenoblade Chronicles X. Hopefully by the end of this year, that would be a big big boon to a lot of fans, myself included, especially because. I do plan on getting Xenoblade Chronicles X. So, two more games left in this list. Next up, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Uh, it's a Zelda game. It has a great art style. Has a great has generally great gameplay. Again, I personally think the, the Wii graphics let this one down and the Wii controls let this one down. So I would personally prefer to see it on maybe the Wii U or the in Nintendo NX as long as it has as long as it receives proper care generally nintendo ports do especially because when you look at legend of zelda wind waker hd on the wii u it does have a, a good quality port and it really does look like they put the time and effort into it so i think that if they did the same thing with skyward sword it would give it a, a real benefit last up this is a, a dual release dual generation dual release kind of thing this one is twilight princess aka which released on the gamecube as well as the wii i'd personally like to see them do hd port based on the gamecube version because the gamecube version is actually supposed to have better performance and it's supposed to have better graphics because i don't know how that works it maybe it's something that the, the wii had to factor in or leave out because of the the control system but apparently also i, I this doesn't really involve it it's like a little tidbit of information apparently the whole game is mirrored because of where where you're holding everything because of it. you'd be swinging with your right hand and all so apparently the entire game is mirrored and um, if you'd run around a corner to the left on the on the gamecube you'd run around a corner to the right on the the wii uh, the wii version so personally i'd like to see them do the, the the hd port based on the gamecube version so let me know in the comment section below i know this has been an extremely long video 
some of your favorite games on that would possibly be HD ported. Now, try to keep them from the 6th gen, uh, possibly maybe the Wii on the 7th gen, simply because like I said at the start of this video, we do, we can all reach back to the Super Nintendo games. We can all reach back to the PS1 games. They're just too obvious at this point. So, I mean, okay, fair enough. Some of this, the games on this list may have been obvious to some people, but I just personally prefer to, to hear what your personal preferences or what your thoughts on my list would be. So let me know all that in the comment section below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter because i got a new series on that starting up at the end of this month. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the rest of the videos in my channel. And I apologize for this video being way too long.